Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Right, so a very good evening to all of you. Now today we are going to talk about carbon heteroatom coupling. So in the previous videos we were talking about carbon carbon coupling, but now we will be ta talking about coupling with let's say sulfur, nitrogen, and uh, oxygen. Okay, and th those are the heteroatoms, and this one the tr the reaction that we are going to discuss today is the Ullmann coupling. Now it's going to be a very general overview about the reaction. Okay, it's not going to be a very detailed video. So if you are just looking for a general overview, if you want to know about Ullmann coupling, then it's a good video in case you already know about Ullmann coupling and you're looking for advanced topics uh, then this video is not for you all right now in the in the previous videos i was getting uh, really really less views and you know i was just thinking about uh, thinking about it that whether you know i should continue with these videos or not but uh, you know recently i just want to share experience i realized that uh, one of my friends or one of my colleagues um, she was stuck in a particular reaction and she was basically trying to make quinolines quinoline derivatives and she, uh, she, you know, she saw my video on Dobner Miller reaction that I had done, and uh, suddenly she got an idea that you know, meta nitrobenzene is also a very good oxidizing. It can act as an oxidizing agent, and she tried. Her reaction was not going with any other oxidizing agent, and she, you know, just saw my video by chance, and she tried it with meta nitro uh, benzene, uh, yeah, right? Meta nitro benzene, and the reaction, you know, it just it it happened okay so she was really happy so i realized that even if i can make a difference even in one person's life by these videos i think these videos are worth it so definitely i'm going to continue with it right uh, anyway now coming to the ullman reaction the classical ullman reaction if i talk about this was done way back in 1901 by a person called fritz ullman or not a person sorry a scientist right i should give him due respect uh, by a scientist called fritz ullman and this is a classical ullman reaction we have two equivalents of let's say any aryl iodide over here we have iodine right so we have aryl iodide and we are using copper as a catalyst we are heating it and we get a biaryl a symmetrical biaryl okay so this is one of the classical ullman reactions getting symmetrical compounds by using two equivalents of a particular compound okay and um, one more very important utility is that let's say if we have any uh, aryl iodide or you know it could be alkyl also in some cases uh, but mostly it's aryl okay so if you have any aryl halogen and uh, aryl halide basically and we use any nucleophile in presence of copper one catalyst and base we can get that nucleophile attached so it's like a new nucleophilic aromatic substitution so you can see the utility of this reaction especially especially in medicinal chemistry in medicinal chemistry and heterocyclic chemistry it has a great utility okay uh, because copper copper catalysts are generally very cheap as compared to let's say rhodium or palladium or platinum or all, all these other expensive expensive elements and uh, the salts of copper cat copper compounds are also quite cheap okay and we can attach any kind of nucleophile like you can see the options over here nhrr dash we can attach oxygen we can attach thiols so there are plenty of options uh, with, with the help of ullman coupling we can attach these compounds okay but uh, there are certain drawbacks as well but I, that i'll discuss later i'll just give you a few examples so if you see the first example over here um, we have nh2 group and we have this uh, aryl um, chloride and you can see this um, this nh group it takes the position of your uh, chlorine and we get a carbon nitrogen coupling over here we get a carbon oxygen coupling okay what is happening we have a phenol and we have a bromobenzene we are using copper 0.2 mole percent you, the temperatures required are very high 210 degrees celsius in the, the these are very old papers you can see it's 1905 so these reactions were not that optimized today also you require high temperatures but not as much like uh, you just you you can do it in let's say a 90 to 120 degrees Celsius most of the Ullman coupling reactions happen in this range 90 to 120 degrees Celsius and again you get this oxygen uh, carbon carbon you know oxygen carbon bond right so carbon heteroatom bond um, then we have amide over here okay benzamide is there and again we are using bromobenzene so even though and this NH2 is not very very nucleophilic because of the presence uh, because the lone pair is participating in resonance even then you know uh, it is participating even though the yield will be less for this reaction, but yes, yes, you can get this product as well So you can see there it there are plenty of uh, advantages of uh, Ullman coupling Okay, 
now uh, this this is another example i hope you can figure this out as well by yourself the fourth example again we have a bromo benzene derivative right a carboxylic group at the ortho position and then we have uh, this compound uh, where you, you know ch2 is very very acidic this ch2 is very very acidic and uh, that's where the coupling is taking place if you see this this is a, this is not this is nothing this is a carbon carbon coupling okay so this is you can say this is not a very good example of uh, i will just check this reaction again you know just avoid this reaction for the time being the fourth one i'm not sure why i have taken this in ulman coupling because it should be a carbon carbon bond this one is a carbon carbon bond forming reaction so just let me go ahead and check this out all right so you can ignore this example for the time being all right the fourth example so these three examples you can have an idea about ulman coupling but there are certain disadvantages like i told you that copper mediated reactions they require harsh conditions very high temperatures even 90 to 120 degree to in, in you know uh, today's world is considered to be high temperature okay you you most of the reactions today you prefer doing it at room temperature without any heating so not these conditions are not very harsh but comparatively and if you compare it in the modern world in the modern synthetic chemistry it is considered as a harsh condition uh, you require strong bases also okay and long reaction time this problem has still not been sorted out even in the modern reactions long reaction time is something which is there you require somewhere from 24 hours to sometimes around 120 hours also that is five days to carry out this reaction from one day to five days which is a lot okay which is a lot in today's world right so these are some of the problems there are several other problems as well like electron poor aromatic substrates um, you know um, are often necessary okay you cannot use electron rich aromatic compounds you have to use electron poor aromatic compounds that means a good electron withdrawing group should be mostly attached to get a good yield okay coming on to the mechanism so the mechanism there, there's a lot of uh, you know um, controversy on the mechanism there are four or five mechanism mechanisms that have been proposed uh, and they have been backed by computational data so there are a lot there are, there are a lot of mechanisms to be studied uh, but in general if i tell you about a very common mechanism that since we are doing coupling reactions we have been following a particular mechanism so i thought it is best to go with this mechanism so what we have is a copper you know we have a copper salt and we are using our nucleophile and a base okay so what does the base do the base abstracts this hydrogen of the nucleophile and um, you know along with that it takes away this x halogen as well so we get our base with our um, you know base with our hydrogen and then this halogen uh, x is also attached to it and with that we get a copper nucleophile bond okay so i hope you can uh, figure out what is happening this base it basically abstracts this hydrogen over here and we get a new nucleophile okay we get a nucleophile nu minus like that something like that okay and then this nu minus attacks this copper and the x group you know kind of leaves and we get this base hx kind of compound along with that we get copper nucleophile bond okay that this is basically you can say uh, organo copper um, bond that is formed next step is our oxidative addition so we have our aryl halogen or aryl, aryl halide and uh, so this copper gets inserted between this uh, aryl group aryl carbon and this halogen so this is the oxidative addition step and then further there's no transmetallation there's just reductive elimination okay and our aryl and nucleophile get attached and we have our copper x back and then you know it can be used in catalytic amount but the problem with this mechanism is that many have uh, proposed is that in this in this compound the copper is in plus one state plus one oxidation state so that means that once it goes oxidative addition it changes into plus three oxidation state which is not a very common oxidation state if i talk about copper copper in plus three oxidation state is not uh, very well observed there are a few uh, complex compounds that exist in copper three oxidation state but there are not many known which are which are having copper in plus three oxidation state so that is the main problem with this mechanism yet it is supported computationally also and since it's a very common mechanism in coupling reactions you know the oxidative addition and the reductive reductive elimination step that's why i thought to go with this particular mechanism right over here on the left side it's a similar mechanism okay absolutely same just that i have made it in a rectangular form instead of a circular form right so th this is your uh, basically ulman coupling i hope you found this video useful if you did please like this video and also share it with your friends thank you so much for watching